Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, listen, man, we <laughs> we definitely got to touch on this situation here with 6 ix 9 and Meek Mill, um, where you got your boy, <laughs> your boy Snitch 9, really over here acting as if he ran down on Meek Mill, man. Now, when I first heard it, I'm like, listen, it don't even make sense. And I don't even understand why people were even getting this guy, I'm getting, giving this guy attention because that's just all he wants. At the end of the day, we know his story, we know his situation. Why are we still giving this man the benefit of the doubt? Why are we still even entertaining this? But I guess it calls for good videos, good views, whatever the case may be. So I guess I'll follow the bandwagon on this one and <laughs> entertain it. So look, look. Now, as far as the videos are concerned, I muted them because YouTube were already on my back. So with all the back-to-back -back cursing in this video, um, I don't got time for them trying to flag or demonetize me or something. So I'm gonna let the videos play so y'all can see, but I took the sound off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the links to the videos though, so you know y'all can watch it for yourselves and make your own conclusion or whatever. Now, I don't know, as far as the video, man, it looked weird. Like, it looked like some orchestrated old school Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestling storyline. I don't know. It just looked like one of those Monday Night Raw, you know, <laughs> Undertaker. I don't know. Um, to be honest, man, if I was Meek, I would have just got in the car and just got out of there. Um, Six Nine just looking for some type of clout, clearly, because that's the only way he stays relevant. And this is what he feed off of. You know, his music went double wood. His, his, Nobody's paying attention. It, his album ain't do well after he acted like or thought he was going to do some crazy amount of numbers. So this is what he got to resort to. You see what I'm saying? And I don't know. Like I said, I just got got in the car and got out of there, man. Like it's no sense in even going back and forth with this man. This is the only way he stays relevant. So it is what it is. Now. What's gonna happen is this will be this like we know what's gonna happen. He's gonna sit there, he's gonna make a diss song to Meek, he's gonna preview it on, on social media somewhere, and then boom, he's back in headlines. And it happens all the time. Like I said, this is how he this is how he eats. This is how he eats. Um I don't know. Anyway, like I said in the video, you could clearly see him behind security talking loud, um, obnoxiously telling Meek and the guys that they soft and that they you know, the P word, I can't say it. And he said Meek has police as his security. And honestly, I don't even see how that's a diss. As you get bigger and bigger and you progress and you become a superstar, a public figure, that'll happen. You don't have normal security. Um, We've seen it with 50 Cent. We've seen it with people like Michael Jackson, um, Eminem, Dr. Dre, uh, Jay-Z. I mean, no one says anything to Jay-Z. However, he rides around with police, police, police. Like the guys protecting him actually look like CIA agents with that thing in their and all that. They look like they're protecting the president, but that's what happens when you become a superstar. And if you ask me, it's actually like a bragging right, because first of all, not everybody could afford security. Let's just say that. And a, and a type of security, like it's levels to it. A lot of people don't know there's levels to security. Like, you know, you get what you pay for. If you want that low budget construction jobs, site safety, <laughs> You know security and you get what you pay for that's that's like the low end of it you know and if you want them dudes in them suits with them white pieces in them um, in their air yeah you gotta you gotta pay that chicken you gotta pay that bread so anyway uh social blogs such as shade room and boil alert of course they post a headline saying six nine runs down on meek mill uh and when like i said when i first seen that live because look there's no way I'm going to believe that a snitch or someone like 6 9 period, is running down on anybody. Then you had a few YouTubers, of course. They got titles like, oh, 6 9 runs down on Meek Mill and Meek Run. Come on, y'all. I know y'all want the clickbait, but let's be serious. And anybody entertain that is just as weird as well. Come on. But on here, um, you know, after the whole situation, Meek Mill took the Twitter after the incident. And he began on his Twitter rampage, of course. And I don't blame him, but he had to clear the air. He said a few things, such as, what do you say? Uh, he said, 6 9 waited outside the club for me. They trying to get us, WTF. Uh, what else? He said, the headline should be, he waited outside a restaurant and popped up with the cops recording with his phone out. He tried to line me up to go to jail. 
what else? He said, we did not run into each other. I was getting in my car and he just popped up. We almost were smoking on that 6 9 pack for the love of a viral moment. He trying to get something locked up, no cap. And I just said that. You know what I mean? I, it, it don't take a genius to see that, man. You got to watch out. 6 9 is dangerous. Uh, he also went on to say, why did he pick me, WTF? And then this was funny. He said, then he said a poo shiesty bar to me, WTF. <laughs> so, I found that one funny because what is he doing talk, reciting a uh, poo shiesty anything? You ain't, you don't live that life, man. We already knew that. But all jokes aside, man, honestly, I feel like this is the devil working and these security guards should be fired from whatever company that they work for. You willingly led your client to put himself, as well as y'all lives, in danger. You see what I'm saying? What if Meek would have responded in a different way? What if somebody in his entourage would have responded in a different way? What if there would have been a situation like the whole King Von and Lil' Tim situation? You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, we got to be mindful of these things. I think that's the devil working. I'm telling you, you could be doing so good. And the next you know, out of nowhere, he said, he, he said 6 9 just popped up. So let's just say that he reacted in a different way or somebody in his, in his entourage reacted in a different way and then this whole thing would have turned left. So I see a couple of y'all, y'all talking about Meek should have did this, he should have did that. But y'all be the same ones that'll be calling him a fool had he did something and got locked up. So let's be real. I mean, and like I said, as far as security, y'all supposed to keep your client out of harm's way, not walk him into it. So like I said, this this whole situation sounds fishy. It don't even make sense. I mean, well, if that was the case, uh, them security guards need to be fired. It doesn't it doesn't make sense, man. It looked like they were looking for something. They wanted to go viral, just like you said. Now, like I said, I'm glad no one was hurt. Shout out to Meek Mill for handling it how he handled it. Uh, we all know as soon as you start doing good, man, the devil is always um, lurking. And that's what happened in this case. I mean, Meek is doing his thing right now. Like he's putting himself on a on a level to where not too many other rappers is on. You know, he's hanging around billionaires. He's hanging around owners of of, of, of sport teams and this billionaire and that billionaire. So this is what happens when you start doing good. Hey, y'all also gotta remember, man. Six nine is still part of federal protection. So let you shoot or do any type of harm or look like you trying to do anything illegal, any of that. And see what happens to you. And this is why I say he's dangerous because he's walking around still talking like he's tough. And whole time, if you even attempt to bring harm to him, you'll end up getting locked up. And it reminds me, it's like, matter of fact, it's like being in the hood, getting into it with a snitch. We all know there's nothing more dangerous than beefing with someone that you know have no problem telling on you. <laughs> like, you know he got no problem telling on you, and you got to beef with this dude. It, does, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Especially these two guys, because they both public figures. Like, people know these guys. So, now, I don't know, man. Um, It's good to see that Meek held his ground and um put his ego and pride aside. And just let that man do what he do, because... I know it took a lot out of him. I feel hot letting somebody like 6 9 think he getting off on me, but it paid off in the end because Meek still got his freedom and no one was hurt. But my question I got is, how in the hell did 6 9 know where Meek was at to just pop up in the first place? Mm, yeah, that's you know what I mean. I guess some FBI powers working his course. I don't know, man, but. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to leave this video here, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Did Meek handle this correctly? Or should he have done something to 6 9 All right? And matter of fact, what you would have done if you was in um, Meek Mill's position? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. And remember, as long as y'all keep on watching, I'm going to keep on dropping. And I'm out.